the scariest or strangest thing you've seen in a national park or national forest, part 7. Get comfy and enjoy the show if you're into it. Smash that subscribe button and spread the word about Thread Tonic. Count one. We were at a state campground in Oregon. I cannot remember its name, but it was a managed campground on a lake with assigned lots and rangers. We used to go there every summer for years. It was a natural lake, with no dams or other structures, and on the other side of the lake were rich houses. One evening, we were getting ready to cook dinner over the fire when a siren went off, like an air raid or a spillway opening. There was no spillway in the area, and we had never heard it before. The people in the lots near us were all just as confused. My parents decided to leave early and packed us all into the van. We never went back there. Account two. Years ago, I was four-wheel driving on Crown land, what we call public land in Canada. For some reason, the British Crown thinks they own it and came across a very large pine tree with 75 to 100 rather old dolls hanging by their necks from the branches. Some were porcelain, some fabric, some plastic. This was about 10 kilometers behind a very small hamlet in rural British Columbia. Account 3. One time years ago, I was camping in Olympic National Park, and it was raining very hard one night. I woke up to the sound of a tree falling very close to me and thought I was a goner. It turns out it was at the campsite next to mine. It scared the crap out of me. Account 4. About five to six years ago, we went camping and saw a UFO. I have a photo of it. What is worse is there was literally nothing we could have done. We thought about leaving, but ended up staying. I kept the fire going all night, but seriously, not something I would like to experience again. Account 5. I was in California, and my husband and I were going to set up our tent when we noticed a huge yellow billboard at the campsite. It said, Caution. Plague danger. Do not camp near holes. Do not touch wildlife. Watch for symptoms, etc. It was probably a relatively small risk, as I am not in the habit of playing with wild marmots, but not a chance I was willing to take at the time. Account 6. I was charged at by a ram on the Bright Angel Trail an hour into a rim-to-rim -rim hike of the Grand Canyon. It could have easily head-butted me right off the cliff. He stopped both charges about five feet in front of me as I was preparing to lock up like an offensive tackle. One of many precarious animal encounters on a three-month, 21 National Park road trip this past summer. Account 7. A grizzly bear from about 200 yards away across a shallow ravine in the Bob Marshall Wilderness, Lewis and Clark National Forest, Montana. I was backpacking with my girlfriend and we were about 100 miles in during a 30-day trek. It would take a good five days to hike out from even that point at 20 miles per day. We froze. It took notice of us and stared for a few minutes and sniffed. It looked to be about 10 feet tall on its hindquarters. It grew bored with us and slowly moved on. Since it was nearing late afternoon, we knew we had to set up our tent soon. Worst night ever, settling down in his likely territory. We took turns sleeping in shifts so that we would have some advance notice of an attack. This was in the time before mobile phones, satellite phones, and bear spray. So we were completely on our own. The arrival of morning was never so sweet as then. By the way, the Bob Marshall, at least at that time, was where they relocated the misbehaving bears from touristed areas. We likely looked to the bear like we were carrying tasty ice cream cones. Lucky for us, if he was a bad bear, he was not hungry. Account 8. My country's largest national park has elephants. We were driving around while I was still very young admiring the wildlife and such when we made a turn and came face to face with the biggest African elephant bull I have seen in my life. It charged the car and my dad somehow managed to out-reverse it before it stormed away into the bush again. I still have a fear of elephants when driving around the park. Count 9. Chiricahua National Monument, Arizona, 1994. My family took me there as a kid on vacation. We were walking a trail when a herd of about 30 Coatamundis crossed the trail in front of us. The rangers said they are really rare that far north. Count 10, Estes Park two different times. The first time my little group and I were walking around Sprague Lake looking at the water. Then all of a sudden a big moose just walked up behind us, looked out over the lake with us for a minute, then walked right into the lake. 
He must have been 15 to 20 feet away. He was totally chill, but at the time it was not cool to be so close to a moose. More recently at Estes, my friend and I hiked all the way up to Hayayaha Lake, 10,500 feet elevation. We were about to sit down and have lunch when it started to thunderstorm. But the thing was that high up, the thunder seemed like it was coming from next to you, not above you. So we boogied and ate lunch a bit later. 11. Obligatory, not American, but I found half of a moped scooter in my local county forest while going for a walk. Just half of the moped. The front was intact, and it looked like it had been cut just before the engine and seat connected. I was really confused as to how it got there, but guessed it was most probably stolen and dumped. I came back to the same place a few weeks later, and it was gone. No signs that it was ever there. Account 12. Not a national park. But there was this one popular place an hour away from where I lived, and there seemed to be a body on rocks, stomach face down. The body was behind a fence. I do not know if it was real, or if it was, if he was dead. But that was strange. For some reason, no one cared. Account 13. More experience than seen, but some guy was following me around picking up everything I looked at in a store in Yellowstone and did the same thing with my mom. Sounds rather benign, but it just felt really weird. Crowded and stalked, I guess. We wanted to go check out something nearby after the shop, but decided against it because we just wanted to get out of there. Account 14. A drunk, large, angry biker in the Black Hills. Not during Sturgis. He looked like he could pull my head off and shit down my neck, and I am not a small dude either. Also, had a smallish dead oak tree fall down about 10 feet behind me in a national wildlife reserve in North Texas. It scared me half to death because it would have broken my head open. Account 15. Was camping with some friends in Ocala National Forest. Me and one friend were sleeping in a tent, the other in the car. We both woke up around midnight from hearing footsteps around the tent and gators flopping around in the nearby lake, which was scary enough. Then we hear what sounds like a bear roaring the most vicious roar I have ever heard in my life. I was never more scared than at that moment we were both completely paralyzed with fear. Turns out it was our friend in the car and he accidentally turned the windshield wipers on. Account 16, UFO. We were staring at a really bright star for ages and all of a sudden it moved across the sky and then faded out and disappeared. The other one was a fox. It was strange because foxes are timid and usually avoid people, but this one came right into the light and stared at us. It got spooked because my partner stood up, so it did a little jump and ran off. Account 17. I am a hunter. I like to shoot recreationally. I own a fluctuating number of guns. So I was reasonably comfortable with the idea of guns and shooting. But when I was driving through the Mojave Desert, I noticed that every street sign had at least one bullet hole in it. I found that unnerving. So far of anywhere, I felt so exposed. Account 18. Backpacking after midnight with no lights but a full moon on Halloween last year. I had to go off trail and make my own campsite. Desperately tired and looking for a non-sloped hill to sleep on, I started walking parallel to the path a good distance away. My girlfriend did the same thing a little farther out. She stumbled upon a campsite with a stone campfire ring and a stick table set up with a small animal skull on it. It was creepy as hell. I accused her of witchcraft and conjuring it up when we needed it. 